Hey guys, we, we are back. We're back on the SAR stories um, from where I left off. Sorry, I haven't been uploading lately. Things have been a bit hectic. But if you could please like and subscribe to the channel, it would help much more. We can get more variety of stories going. And yeah, comment. Let me know what you like. Let me give me some ideas of new stories to tell. And even share your own, and let's really push this along. Now into the story, guys. It's been way too long since I posted an update, and I'm sorry about that. There's also been some confusion about the new format requirements on the board, which I've cleared up. So these next few stories are going to be posted a little differently. They'll be in chronological order, and I'll do my best to tie them into each other as much as I can. So it doesn't skip around too much. When I started out as a rookie, no one had told me a lot about the job in terms of weird things that could happen. I'm assuming this was largely to prevent me from freaking out and abandoning the park. But a few months into my service, when I was still a rookie, a friend and I were drunk at a party. And he opened up a bit. Yeah, it can get a little crazy out there, I guess. As I think the worst are the ones where people die when they shouldn't, you know? Or when we find them dead like 10 minutes after someone says they saw them last. They were fine when I passed them on the switchback, I swear. That sort of shit. Like that. This guy who I found one spring out on a really popular trail. Someone comes into the VC freaking out about some guy who's lying in the middle of the path. In this giant pool of blood, so we run out there. And we find this guy dead as a doornail which he absolutely should be, because the back of his head is like mashed potato. The skull is decimated, brains are leaking out like custard filling, and the guy is old, so you figure, yeah, he's probably fell and hit his head. Old people fall all the time. It's no big deal, except this area where he fell doesn't have any big rocks. There's not even any stumps or big branches. And on top of that, there's no blood trail, so he clearly died where he dropped. Now that's when you turn to murder. But there were people just out of the line of sight with the guy. If someone came up behind him and murdered him, there's no way someone would have he- wouldn't have heard. And again, even if someone had there'd be a blood trail, splatter all over the place. But everyone on the scene said it looked exactly like he'd fallen and smashed his head on a rock. So what the fuck did he hit his head on? And then there was a lady I found in a different park about five years ago. Back when I was upstate, we found her in the middle of a stand of big junipers, curled around a trunk like she was hugging it, We pick her up to move her, and a fucking waterfall comes out of her mouth. Splashes all over my shoes. Her clothes are dry, and her hair is dry. But the amount of water in her lungs and stomach was phenomenal. Unreal man. Coroner's report says the cause of death was drowning. Her lungs were completely full of water. This, even though in the middle of the high desert, and there isn't a body of water for miles, no puddles, nothing, no signs of anyone else being out there. I mean, yeah, it's possible they were murdered, but why go out of the way to do it like that? Why not stab them and be done with it? I don't know. It just is weird with me. Now, of course, that freaked me out a little. 
but we were wasted, so I guess I sort of wrote it off as a fluke. I also assumed there was a lot of exaggeration there, since you know we were wasted. Now, I don't like talking about the next case very much. It is an awful one. I've done my best to forget about it, but of course that's easier said than done. This happened about six months ago. The conversation with my friend at the bar. And up until that point, I hadn't had a lot of really weird shit go on. A few things here and there. And of course the stairs. But it's amazingly easy to get used to stuff like that. When it's treated as if it's normal. This case was a little different. A guy with Down syndrome in his 20s went missing after his family lost sight of him on a major path. That was odd in itself because the guy never left his mom's side. She says she was absolutely convinced he'd been kidnapped and unfortunately a ranger who isn't with the park anymore insinuated that no one was going to kidnap someone. Well, with that kind of disability. Not very tactful to say the least. We wasn't a lot of time trying to call her, calm her down. Enough to get information about him. And then we put out an official missing persons call because of the urgency of the situation. Him being mostly unable to function alone. We had local police come and help us. We didn't find him the first night, which was heartbreaking. None of us wanted to think of him being alone out there. We were assuming he just kept wondering. And he was staying ahead of us. We brought the helis out the next day. They spotted him in a little canyon. I helped bring him back up. But he was in bad shape. I think we knew he wasn't going to make it. He'd fallen and broken his spine and couldn't feel his lower half. He'd also broken both of his legs. One in the femur, and he lost a lot of blood. He was confused and scared, or he was alone. He probably exaggerated the injuries by dragging himself a little way. I know it sounds awful, but while I was riding in the copter with him, I asked him why he wandered off. I just wanted something to tell his mother, to let him know it wasn't her fault, because he was fading fast, and I didn't think she would get to ask him herself. He was crying, and he said something about the little sad boy, and wanted him to play. He said the little boy wanted him to trade, so he could go home. Then he closed his eyes and he woke up again. He was in the canyon. I'm not sure that's exactly what he said, but it was what I thought the gist was. He kept crying, asking where his mummy was. I held his hand and tried my best to keep him calm. It was cold out there, he kept saying. It was cold out there. My legs were frozen. It was cold out there. It's cold in me. He was getting even weaker, so he eventually stopped talking, and he closed his eyes for a while. Then, when we were about five minutes from the hospital, he looked right at me, these big tears running down his face, and says, Mama, won't see me no more. Love, Mama. Wish she was here. And he closed his eyes, just like that. Never woke up. It was horrible. And I don't like talking about it. That case was one of the first that really rattled me badly. Because of how badly it affected me, I reached out to a senior ranger who had ended up helping me through it. As time went on, we got to know each other better. He ended up sharing one of his own stories with me. It was disturbing, but it helped me to know 
that I wasn't the only one being affected by things going on out there. I think this must have happened before you got here because I think if it's happened while you were here, you'll remember it. I know it didn't end up in the news for some reason, but I think most people who've been here long enough know about it. The park sold off a portion of the land to the logging company and it was a really controversial thing because it wasn't that large or old of a plot and it wasn't right after a recession so we need did cash bad anyway they were felling this plot of land and we get a call that we need to get our supervisor out right away i don't know why but they ended up sending me and a few of our guys along with the heads, I guess for power in numbers to see what was up. We got there and all these guys were crowded around one tree and they've just cut it down. They're all pissed off and freaking out and the foreman comes over and says he wants to know what we think we're up to. What the hell you think this is? Some kind of sick joke? You've got a lot of fucking nerve pulling this shit. We brought this land fair and square. Well, we don't know what the hell he's talking about. So he brings us over to the, this felled tree and points in and tells us that when he cut it down, it was just like this. And so will be damned if they put it there. The inside of the tree was a rotted out hollow in one spot. And when they cut it down, it had exposed the chamber. And inside it is a hand, like perfectly severed hand. And looks like it's actually fused with the tree inside of the tree. Well now we think they're pulling a joke so we tell them that we don't like being fucked with and we start to leave but they tell us they've already called the cops and they've got the right to the media if we don't stick around we all get the head's attention so they stick around and talk to the police about it everyone is denying that they put the hand in there and besides, how would anyone have done it? It's clearly a real hand, but it's not mummified or skeletal. It's brand new, probably not even a day old, and it is definitely fused with the wood. You can see that it's just coming right out of it. The loggers, they insist that they didn't put it there. Somehow, its fresh human hand ended up fused inside of a living tree. The cops have cut up the section of the tree into a movable chunk. Then they take the hand away and the area is closed off. There was a pretty big investigation, but I didn't find any answers. Now it's become this legend. And as far as I know, we haven't sold any more property for logging. As you all know, I went to a training seminar recently and heard some amazing, horrible things there. One of the guys I talked to while I was there told me a story when we were all around the campfire one night. We were both pretty drunk. You'll see a pattern here, and we're swapping stories. He told me this one. Me and another guy were out on a field search because some campers reported screaming noises at night. So we head out there to look for whatever fucking mountain lion has wandered into the area, and I'm pissed. We've had three of them show up in the camping areas that year alone 
I'm getting tired as hell of constantly having to deal with them. Plus, I just don't like them anyway. They're a pain in the ass. And they're loud and scare the shit out of me. Fucking cats, piece of shit. I'm groaning about to the guy I'm with. And he thinks it's a real fucking riot. So we're seeing all these broken branches and what looks like dens. And we're pretty sure we know where the thing is. I call in and tell them to confirm if possible. Which, you know, just means they want us to step in a big pile of shit and use that as proof. I'm not seeing any though. So basically I just tell them to shove it. I'm done. We know that damn thing's out there somewhere. Even if I stepped in it shit or inside his mouth or whatever. Guy, I'm thinking, guy I'm wondering off to take a piss or whatever. And I stay behind watching this little burrow under a tree to see if maybe a fox or something is living under it. Because I love foxes, man. They're cute as hell. But anyway, I'm watching this tree and I start hearing branches cracking. And it's coming from the direction of my partner went opposite me. Now I've got my pistol. But you and I both know that's not going to do shit against a cat. I cock it and holler for my partner to get his dumbass back. But it's too far and he can't hear me. I stand up and get my sight on where the thing is approaching. And I shoot you not, man. I just pee myself. This guy is coming towards me. And he's back flipping through the fucking woods. Like instead of walking. He's doing these crazy fucking backflips. And I swear to God. He clearly. Cleared every fucking log and bush in his path. It was like he knew right where he is going. I yelled at the guy to stop right where he is. That I'm pointing my gun right at him, but he keeps coming. And I'm just kind of lost it. I shot at the ground in front of him. And it was a dumb fucking thing to do. But man, I didn't want the guy anywhere near me. I fired. He was about 50 yards from me. And as then, the gun goes off. He whirls around and goes back off, flipping back into the woods. My partner hears my gun go off and runs back and asks what's up. And I tell him there's some fucking weirdo idea opping up on God knows what. And we need to get the hell out of Dodge. I let the cops know what happened. And I didn't get back to any trouble for firing. But man, I don't know what that motherfucker was on. Because I've never seen anything like that before. She, she was absolutely but fuck crazy. I think we can agree that there's stuff going on out here in the woods. And while I'm not going to spout off about what it could be or offer any theories, what I want people to take away from all of this is that it is so damn important to be safe when you're out there. I know a lot of you think you are invincible, but the fact is you can die out there or be hurt or go missing. It's easier than you'd ever imagine. I apologise for the relatively short update, guys. I will be doing my absolute best to continue the series as soon as possible. Thank you for continuing support. It means the world to me. So there's another update, guys. And just to close, if you could please like, subscribe and comment to the video. We can grow this and get some more types of stories up and even do some more ventures with the channel. 
hear from you again soon.